Vicaris himen kai eirene apoteu patros hemon kai kiriu esu Christu. Grace to you and the peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 1 2. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, hearty welcome to a brief lecture on Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Let's begin with a brief background of the second Corinthians. During his second missionary journey, Paul visited Corinth between 50 to 52 AD. Staying there for one and a half years, Paul preached the word of God and founded a lively Christian community there. During his third missionary journey, he visited Corinth once again between 54 to 58 AD. In order to answer certain questions and perplexed situations of the Corinthian church, Paul wrote his first letter to the Corinthians during his third missionary journey from Ephesus. One year after his first letter, Paul wrote again another major letter to the same community members on certain grounds, of course, in addition to a couple of other letters. Now, a couple of words about the authorship of the letter and the addresses. There is no doubt about the authorship of this letter and universally scholars consider it as proto-Pauline, that is, it is an authentic letter of Paul. Paul begins this letter by introducing himself as Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God that is, that is in Corinth, including all the saints throughout Achaia. Just as in the case of the first letter, here too, Paul says that he is writing to the church of God, Ecclesia to Theo in Corinth. Now a word about the date and place of the letter. Paul wrote the second letter to the Corinthians towards the end of the year 57 AD from Macedonia during his third missionary journey. What triggered Paul to write down another letter to the assembly at Corinth? Shortly after sending the first letter, some sort of crisis developed there in Corinth. Yes, since the writing of 1 Corinthians, Paul had to deal with a very serious crisis in the church of Corinth, in which his apostolic authority had been opposed, questioned, and by some scornfully denied. Receiving the news of the worsening situation in the Corinthian Christian community, Paul was forced to pay a brief and painful visit. He departed from there having promised them to pay a longer visit, which in fact never took place. Instead, Paul sent a representative to whom he delegated his authority. All that happened was that a second crisis developed. Paul's authority committed to this delegate had been flouted. Paul still did not pay the promise to visit, but sent a sorrowful letter written with many tears, which does not survive today. However, this letter had produced the desired effect. Titus brought this good news from Corinth to Paul. Titus communicated that this Sorrowful letter had its effect in the Corinthian community and the community regretted over their behavior. At this stage, Paul wrote the second major letter to the Corinthians. Now a word about the structure of the letter. 1, 1 to 11 is an epistolary introduction. 1, 12 to 7, 16. Paul deals with the crisis between Paul and the Corinthians. 8 to 1 to 9 15, the collection for the poor Christians at Jerusalem. 10 1 to 13 10, 
false vindication of his apostolic authority. Chapter 13 verses 11 to 13 that is the concluding exhortation from the part of Paul and the salutation and the final greetings. Let us deal with the question, what are the major contents of this second letter to the Corinthians? In the first part of the letter 1, 12 to 7, 16, Paul deals with a couple of matters that are important to be addressed. Primarily in the first chapter, Paul responds to the accusations made by his opponents, although we do not know who exactly are the adversaries of Paul. Paul tells the Corinthians that he had acted with sincerity and according to his own conscience. His claim is that his conscience is clear in the way he has dealt with the Corinthians. He has conducted himself with godly holiness and sincerity. His motives have been pure. He has not acted in a self-centered way. In chapter 2, Paul talks about someone who has caused grief both to him and the whole congregation. Here Paul asked the Corinthian church to forgive the member whom it had punished for some serious offense. Paul wants them to take him back and integrate him into the community exercising the ministry of reconciliation. The desired effect of punishment has come in the form of repentance of the offender and now he should be forgiven. Paul's purpose behind this is not to allow Satan to exploit the situation against the church. In 2, 14, 7, 16, we come across Paul's defense of his apostolic authority. His apostleship was questioned on account of his suffering, his weak personal appearance and his commitment to preach the gospel at his own expense. His opponents took these as signs of his inferiority as an apostle. In such a context, Paul confidently speaks about his sufficiency and boldness as an apostle. Moreover, here Paul turns the attention of the readers to the ministry of the new covenant. For Paul, the ministry of the new covenant surpasses the ministry of the old covenant. The ministry of the new covenant is a treasure in jars of clay. The ministry of the new covenant is a ministry of universal reconciliation. The ministry of the new covenant calls for separation from unbelievers. In the second part of the letter, 8 to 1 to 9 15, Paul speaks about the collection for the poor Christians at Jerusalem. Once the crisis in his relationship to the Corinthians is sold to joy, Paul represents before them a sensitive topic, an appeal to their generosity in extending material help to the church in Jerusalem. Paul looks at the contributions of various churches towards Jerusalem as a sign of their acceptance of the gospel. Pointing to the inspiring example of the Macedonian church in sending their contributions to Jerusalem, Paul appeals for the contribution of the Corinthians for the Jerusalem church. According to Paul, the collection for the church at Jerusalem will create among the Christians of the two churches, the church in Corinth and the church in Jerusalem, a spirit of sharing and a spirit of unity and prayer. Further, it creates mutual appreciation between the two churches. In the third part of this letter, 10.1 to 13.10, we see Paul's vindication of his apostles, apostolic authority. Yes, truly in this part, Paul tends to answer the biting criticism of the new ministers and their supporters within the Corinthian church. It is clear from what is written that Paul, his ministry and his doctrines were under wholesale attack. Paul viewed with the utmost seriousness 
the presence of these super apostles among the Corinthians. Against the false allegations of the opponents, Paul writes to the Corinthians very boldly and maturely. We, however, will not boast beyond limits, but will keep within the field that God has assigned to us to reach out even as far as you. For we were not overstepping our limits when we reached you. We were the first to come all the way to you with the good news of Christ. As the true apostle of the Corinthians, Paul finally warns the community members. I warned those who sinned previously and all the others and I warned them now while absent as I did when present on my second visit that if I come again I will not be lenient. 2 Corinthians 13 2. Paul concludes his letter by the usual wishing of grace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Thank you. Thank you.